What's up, world? Dang, I'm loud. What's up, baby? Hey, check out my theme song. Even though they big. <laughs> this is C. Renee. Ah, uh, y'all heard of C. Renee? Mm-hmm. She's a local chick. Oh. Uh, this is my theme song, and she produced it. I got another song, too, I love a lot, and it's, um, who's is it? Snoop Dogg and Duvall. Oh, now. I'm know, from I'm from Duvall. Oh, <laughs> Lil Duvall, but what is it? What's the name of his song? Smile, chick. I ain't going back and forth with you people. Okay, you don't have to clean it up. I am Tampa Bay Tammy. You're tuned in to In Touch Radio, reality radio where everyone is a star. And today is a beautiful day in Tampa Bay. And if you're anywhere else, I feel sorry for you. Let me get this gum out of my mouth. Especially since Daryl has put a video camera in the house. I don't like this camera thing, y'all. Because I could come to work with my T-shirt and my panties on and wouldn't nobody know the difference. But now all of a sudden, he want to bring a camera in the house. <laughs> so we got to clean everything up. Can't be coming in here with T-shirts and shorts. You got to put your jewelry on. Got to paint your lips and mascara. God dang, I'm going to have to start putting on eyelashes <laughs> just to come to work. But it's a beautiful day in Tampa Bay, and I am so yeah. glad you are tuned in. I want you to call a friend and tell them to listen in because we got some great things going on. But most of all, it is Tampa Week in in Tampa Bay. I call it Tampa Week because all these men of fine new parties, men from Kappa Alpha Psi from all over the place have convened in Tampa Bay and they're staying at the Grand Hyatt. That's the host hotel. So that's where we were last night and we did a little interview and a little streaming. Daryl, you're going to be mad at me because I'm going to stick this gum somewhere. I got some beautiful people in the house with me, some people I've been knowing for quite some time. I can't even... Remember how far back it goes, but it may be 20 years, but at least 15. Absolutely. Absolutely. This chick, too, her mic is not on. Come on, say something to me. Well, good morning, Tammy. Hey, now come on, <laughs> handsome, say something to me. Good morning. Hey, now this is a married couple right here. Aren't they beautiful? Because y'all can see them. Wave, honey. They, they have changed things, okay? <laughs> oh, now y'all got to get a little closer. Now he's going to tell us we got to get a little closer. Closer, closer. And that's why I like the couples together. Don't, next time, don't split them up. I want them right in the middle. I want to see them interact and reach out and touch each other and all that good stuff. <laughs> so we lady to bring in. Well, let me give you, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Rod Cunningham. Okay, and this beautiful lady. And I am Valerie Cunningham, the wife of Rod Cunningham of 23 years. Hey, see, this is a power couple. And Rod, you are retired what? Retired Air Force, 29 years. Now, you know what I say about those retired military men, right? <laughs> what do you say, Tammy? They stay young, they stay fit, and they got two chicks. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like them two check men. We like two them two check men, that retired yes. chick. And whatever job you still can get on, because we're we not through working you, okay? We want you to stay young, not idle at all. Now, Rod has been, wait a minute, before we even get into your book, he's written a book. I got to tell you about Val, how far back Val and I go. Val used to dress me. Val had a boutique, and some of my baddest pieces came from Val's boutique. Val, what was the name of your boutique back then? The boutique was called Valerie Nicole Boutique, and you started out with me on Cyprus. Then we moved a little bit further into South Tampa on Beta Bay. Now, my favorite outfit of all I remember from you, and if I can find it, I never let it go. I think I passed it on to one of my daughters. It was a lavender green and light blue jean suit sequence all the way through it. (laughs) And wherever I went, baby, I spoke. Sparkled and shine, and I loved it. Then you even gave me some fly shades to match the suit. You couldn't tell me anything. I was bad. <laughs> Valerie, I have a, quite a few. Then you gave me, uh, I got some of my baddest jeans from you with slit up the side. I still got those hanging in the closet. Can't let them go. Some of, some of my baddest wares came from Valerie Nicole's. Glad to see that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so you may need to get back into the boutique or the dressing or the shopper's business because to me that was just your niche. Well, thank you, Tammy. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. What are you doing now? You know they keep she keep going in and out. What's up with that? Okay, you're going to work on it, baby. Mm-hmm. Now, DJ CEO is on the board today. So, hey, 
you know I ain't giving him any slack. I'm on him now. He always saying, look, Tammy, lighten up. No, baby, this reality radio, this real. He said he got this. And I want to tell you something. You almost got me a little sick. Y'all stay away from me a little bit. I'm not sneezing or anything, but I feel a scratchy throat. Did you do this? I did everything. <laughs> See, I was staying away from him. Uh huh. But I got weak last night. I had All to let right. Him crawl on over next to me. Now I look like I'm about to pay for it. And I hollered my way into this. <sighs> now I can't have me. So that, girl. That's the best medicine in the world. What you say? Wait a minute. You know, it usually cures everything. Yes. Unless they got a cold. Okay. Child, stay away from those men with colds and flus. Now he's better and he think he's going to leave me at home. I'm going to be well. I took my echinacea, I sprayed my ears, I rubbed my throat with some Vicks, I goggled with my Listerine, and when I go home, I'm eating me some hot soup, so I will be at the party tonight. <laughs> but speaking of Kappas and being at the Grand High tonight, to my left is none other than OQ. What up, baby? I... <laughs> and he wrote a book. What's the name of your book? The name of my book is Klein. Climb. Face your past and own your future. Face your path, past, past mm-hmm. and own your future. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Now, when did you come out with this book? Um, I published this book back in about about eight months ago. Eight months ago. Yes, ma'am. And where can it be purchased? It can be purchased on my website at www.chooseclimb.com. And what is the price of the book? Twenty nine fifty each. Twenty nine fifty each. So when they go to buy it online, uh, what kind of fees? Any other additional fees? Uh, we have a shipping fee, mm-hmm. and um, that's it. Okay, so about thirty dollars, you're good to go. Okay? Right now, now, I did. Uh, if they want to buy both books together, I uh, I put it on sale today for forty five dollars. Oh, both books. wait a minute, both books. Break it down. I'm slow. Come on. So we have climb and we have climb two. Okay. Time to soar. Time to soar. So when did you come out with the first one? Uh, the first one came out in April, and the second one came out in July. Oh, you weren't playing. No, I've ma'am. been writing a book for 10 years. It <laughs> hasn't come out yet. <laughs> but it's the compilation of Dear Girlfriend Letters, or should I say the Chronicles of Dear Girlfriend. I don't know what I'm going to name it, but you have come out with one behind the other. It looks like a workbook, too. Is it a workbook? Yes, book? it's a workbook. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you you, you really getting them out. You, you allow them to read and then work toward where they need to be, right? Exactly. Every After every chapter, you have to do something to move yourself closer to emotional wellness. Oh, emotional wellness. Well, I can accept that because you're military. Y'all be damaged like a big dog. Because <laughs> where you been? Tell me where you been. When I was in um, Biloxi, Mississippi, we left here um, around 2012. On, and my last station was Biloxi, Mississippi, and we I retired there for four years and came back. I was wondering where you all had disappeared to. You were in Biloxi, Mississippi. Yes, hey, you were too far from my stomping ground. Air Force Base. Yeah, the, uh, Keister Air Force Base. Keister yeah. Air Force Base, because you know we're originally from Memphis, Tennessee, but which is right next to Mississippi. And did, then Daryl was in Louisiana, so we really okay. weren't that far from each other. But we weren't seeing each other; we were missing each other. So during this time, when did you start this book, Klein? Um, I started it. Uh, well, what was happening in the Air Force um, at the time was that we had uh, a lot of young people who were getting in trouble. Okay. And. They came to my office because I was going to decide if I was going to kick them out of the Air Force or let them stay in. (laughs) And based on thousands of young people um, telling me their most innermost secrets in their lives, I began to see a pattern. Mm -hmm. And through those patterns, I started doing a lot more research on human behavior, emotional intelligence, and things of that nature. And that's how we came up with the book, because... If you take a 13-year-old boy Mm -hmm. who saw his father strike his mother, Mm -hmm. we call that trauma. Oh, my. Okay. You heard that right. Okay. If a young man or a young lady has been touched inappropriately, we also call that trauma. If they never deal with that, those 13-year-olds never deal with that, what kind of decision do you think they'll be making in their 20s and 30s? -hmm. You know, maybe they're dealing with some... Sadness, mm-hmm. some low anger, self-esteem, low all self-esteem, that. Mm-hmm. in and out of relationships, mm-hmm. in and out of careers, some anxiety. 
But all of a sudden at 45, we look at them and they walk into a room and they walk in with light. And we think, wow, you've changed. What did you do? You, you look so happy. You look so exuberant. What, what, what changed? And they go, well, I, well, I got saved. I, I volunteered at my church. Okay, well, what else did you do? I don't know. And then, but, so what happened was it took them 30 years to stumble across the five steps to emotional wellness. Emotional wellness, okay. And so what if someone wrote a book? And that's what you <laughs> did, okay. That will teach those 13-year-olds those five steps to emotional wellness. So you're saying grab them in middle school. Grab, grab them when the incident occurs okay. and teach them these five steps. Then what you will find is, and they may, it may take them a minute to embrace it. Let's, so let's say they embrace the steps at 14. Mm-hmm. What kind of decisions will they be making now in their 20s, 30s, and beyond? Better decisions. Much so better decisions. So this is an excellent book for sociology majors as well as teachers and coaches. Exactly. And what I found with teachers is that when they read the book for their students, they find that they have to deal with their own stuff mm-hmm. as well. Everybody mm-hmm. got some stuff. We do. Mm-hmm. You'll be surprised what your stuff is. You don't even know you have some stuff until it come out and someone else identify it. We can always find out what's wrong That's with someone right. else, but we can't identify things in, our, in ourselves. Right. I'm good to find out what's wrong with Daryl Jones. It ain't a Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> And we're working on it. <laughs> and so, I got a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, and I do I'm too. I'm work from Look. home. <laughs> <laughs> and he can find a whole lot of stuff wrong with me. So, you know, that's how we all We find out what's wrong with each other, but He's we need to do what I said. It's going to be called Climb 3. Climb 3. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where your mic is, but you coming in and out. No, okay. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. you're looking good over there, but if you ain't going to have a mic, you need to just be, be quiet. <laughs> I just want you to pick up a mic because I like DJ CEO to make comments. <laughs> okay, climb, climb. While he was writing this book, how was it affecting you, Val? That's an awesome question, Tammy, because as you said, oftentimes we are good mm-hmm. at seeing the struggles of others, mm-hmm. but very seldom do, do we, we have the check courage ourselves. or the foresight to check ourselves. Mm-hmm. And as Rod was doing his research and asking some very qualifying emotional intelligence questions Mm -hmm. you know i had to answer those questions from a place of authenticity Mm -hmm. and integrity Mm -hmm. and what i learned from my own self (sighs) is that i had things from my childhood from my teenage years Mm -hmm. that were still impacting decisions okay that i was making as an adult Okay, he says he's going to fix it at the break. But, okay. girl, I love the way you're expressing yourself. She is beautiful, well-spoken. Look into the camera so they can see Val. Hey, good Val. Man. Hey. Look, now, Rod, he's a good-looking man. But you see what he picked? Uh-oh. A good-looking woman. So, girls, y'all got to be on your game. That's for you young women that think y'all can come out here half. Mm-hmm. I can cuss. It's my show. <laughs> <laughs> If you want a 10, you got to be a 10. If you, you see what I'm saying? Y'all running up around here and you're looking like threes and fours and think mm-hmm. you can get an eight, nine, or a 10. Mm-hmm. It does not work like that. You got to be a vow, baby. She's a bad broad. Always have been, always will be. Thank you, Tammy. Love to have her on my side. And girl, if I could just get you to dress me again, <laughs> it'd be all good. But okay. Well, you know, I was a six and she brought me to a 10. Okay. Because you're a 10, baby. You're a 10. When a brother can write a book, he's a 10. When a brother can complete the military, he's a 10. When a brother can move his family from here, there, and everywhere and still be together, they are a 10. Okay, look for your 10. (laughs) But you got to be a 10, too. Now, Biloxi, Mississippi to here, Tampa, Florida. How long? Oh, we've been back now three years, and we went to St. Petersburg. Okay. And so I did, um, I was working in St. Petersburg with the Urban League as the vice president of public relations over there. I told you, teen girl. (laughs) But we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and talk about what you were doing when St. Petersburg and Urban, uh, what was it? Urban League. At the Urban League, and how this has helped you with your book. Mm -hmm. I am Tampa Bay Tammy. Call a friend and tell them to listen in. And if you want to call in, you can do that, too. I'll give you the number when we get back. Have a great day. Don't go anywhere. Hey. I, I, I love my head. I love my eyes. I love my eyes. 
views and opinions expressed on this show are those of the host, guests, and callers who are responsible for their content and do not reflect the opinions of Entouch Radio or its staff. Been in a car crash? Call Ricky. Don't know what to do? Ask Ricky. We will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain. So call Ricky, ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. Call Ricky, ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. Florida has created more than one million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures Scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Glad you didn't go anywhere. I am Tampa Bay Tam. You are tuned into In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, and in the house with me today, I have none other than Rod Cunningham, the author, and his beautiful wife, Valerie Cunningham. Married how many years? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Mm-hmm. A power couple, a beautiful power couple at that. Now they have been all over the world because he's retired military, but now they're presently back in Tampa Bay. And where were have you lived before? Um, I'm originally from Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. And so I've lived in different countries. and you Like know. what? Because, baby, we can be hot here all over the world. So <laughs> tell us what country. Don't play like we just local. Okay. We national and international. Go. Where? Well, I've been stationed in Germany. Um, in we got some of our best listeners in Germany. Our most listeners out of Germany. Really? I was in yeah. Ramstein, Germany back in 87, 89. Hey, Germany boys. All you fine military men in Germany. <laughs> hey, let me fix y'all up. Okay, y'all need a better half. Come on, keep going. I left Germany and went to Blyville, Arkansas. They've oh, since cl- I know about <laughs> Blyville. <laughs> closed that base. Yeah, they closed it. Yes. It got what? Was, was that raggedy or that rednickish? Because <laughs> I know about Blyville. I went to school with some uh, ladies from Blyville when I was at UAPB, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Familiar with hey. that uh, school mm-hmm. as well. And so the mall used to be in Memphis. That's our closest <laughs> mall back then was coming to Memphis. So okay, yeah, we came okay. to Memphis a lot back okay. in those days. And y'all used to come in and try to party at, uh, what was that, 2001 on top of the rooftop or something? Back, back you remember then, that? I think it was... Infinity? Like... Club B's or Mr. B's or Mr. something. Oh, you were at the hole in the wall. I I thought he was going to name that strip club. But you did. Good move, good move, good move. Ladies and the ladies from Memphis, you remember this man? From back in the day? Well, he's gone now. He's married. He's off the market. Uh, well, we would go to your concerts out in the park. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we could do a lot and of concerts. And Overton Square and the Dome and right. all that. Okay, okay. Sound like you know a little bit. So from Blyville, where? And then from Blyville, I went to Shimya, Alaska. Alaska. My daughter's been to Alaska. I've never been to Alaska. Shimya. Alaska. Yeah, it was, uh, island was two miles by four miles. Island. <laughs> Yes. And didn't it get dark and stay dark or something? Yes, for it stayed dark for 24 hours, and we went through that for about a month mm. of darkness. And after that? After that, I went to, uh, or came to McDill. Hey, McDill Air Force Base, the base, the, what do you all call this? The headquarters for everything, right? Yes. <laughs> headquarters for SOCOM, headquarters for U.S. Central Command, uh, SOCOM, not SOCOM, I'm sorry, uh, SOC South. And one thing about the MacDill Air Force Base, it's on Dell Maybe You can run from one end of Dell Maybe to the other, but it runs out at MacDill mm. and they stop you. <laughs> Baby, they got the guards out there with the guns. You not going any further. But anyway, it's a whole lot of military men for you single ladies thinking about where to go and have a good time. Come on down to Tampa Bay. All those military men on MacDill Air Force Base. From there, where were you? 
Los Angeles. That's when we met you. Yes. I, you did went L.A. Los, too? Went to L.A. Mm-hmm. I went to Los Angeles. Oh, oh you from L.A.? No, I met her in Tampa. Then we, oh, we, then we to moved LA to L.A. LA together. Oh, then you took her with you. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so how long were y'all in L.A.? Four years. Four years. And then what did you do? Came back to this area. I got out of the Air Force and uh-huh. went into the Guard okay. and then the Reserves. And then I went back in to finish. Hey, and get your thirty, your twenty years. The twenty years, yes, yes, yes but twenty nine yes. total. Yeah, because you were almost well. thirty. That's all I was gonna say. Twenty nine. Yeah. I got you. I got you. So, how did you feel about being here, there, and everywhere? I was fine with it. I, I, I love adventure. I love new cities, new people, different cultures. So it was perfect for us. Okay. Absolutely. Now, so my thing is, it would be perfect for me too because I get bored easily. Mm-hmm. So it's something <laughs> fresh, new. Get a chance to redecorate, get a new space. I can relate. Yes. I love that. I love that. While we talking, I know this is old school, but I'm old school. What's your zodiac sign, girl? I'm Leo. You and what are you? Pisces. Pisces. Okay, it's working, y'all. Leo and Pisces. Some of y'all getting excited to my, my man, Leo. I'm a Leo and I'm a Pisces. <laughs> well, maybe that'll work for you too. I like to share what what works, and as far as what works, we're talking about how we get to what works. Oh yeah, Daryl and I work very well. He yes. want to know we work <laughs> Capricorn and Virgo work. Very well. Who's a Capricorn? He is. When's your birthday? Day after Christmas, honey. Happy belated birthday. Yeah, we always birthday. throw on a party or something <laughs> after Christmas for the holidays. I'll be like, okay. We don't have to throw a party. Everyone knows, close friends know it's his birthday, so they'll come over for drinks or cake. And sometimes we invite others over, you know, the ones who may not know. And we always have a good time. We had a good time this year. Daryl, we put together a party at the last minute, and then he just had to have a DJ. <laughs> Girl, at night, we around here telling Tammy, I want a DJ. I said, well, you want a real party, don't you? <laughs> so we called DJ TP, and he came right on in, and we had a great time. Yeah, I, li- I like my man. My man. <laughs> He keeps me popping, too. Okay, now, you all, you decided to, after all these travels, you got, when when did it hit you, I'm going to put out this book? Well, when I um, began to study all of those young people Mm -hmm. and realize that we are more alike as human beings than we are different, and then my mom passed. Okay. That's And then five months later, her mom passed. Oh, So I found myself in a situation where suicide came across my brain. What? And I was like, and at the time I was an E9 chief master sergeant. I had 5,000 troops. I was a counselor. Mm -hmm. So I knew if that thought came to my head that I, I knew I needed to get help. And that, if it came in your head, that's right. it definitely must be coming in some of the other people are saying. And that's mm-hmm. my thought. I'm okay. like, okay, so if I'm dealing with the pain I'm dealing with losing my mom, what does a 10-year-old go through when he loses his dad? Mm. Oh, my God. Okay. And now he's 14, and he's smoking weed or drinking, and people are going, what is wrong with you, boy? What is wrong with you? And he's thinking, just because you've got an over, over my daddy's death Doesn't don't mean, mean I got heads. over it. Right. Self-medicating. Because mm-hmm. we don't teach you know we just say we're gonna pray about it you're gonna be all right Mm -hmm. ain't nothing wrong with you boy Mm -hmm. we don't teach our young people what to do when they're faced with these uh these situations like that and then we the stuff that's bothering us at 14 will bother us at 64 if we never deal with it yeah because death is daily so we that's one of the first things we have to learn to deal with or teach our children to deal with i think it's bad when they don't not allow them to go to the funeral saying it's going to be traumatic or whatever because this is real life. People die yes. every day and there's a graveyard full of them and they need to see mm-hmm. why we're saying don't do this and don't do that. We don't want to leave you out here either. I used to tell my children that. So I didn't I didn't sugarcoat that because we had to deal with it. Now, what did you learn? You It was some steps that you wanted to share? Or? Yes. So there are four things that will bother us that we can't get through on our own as okay. human be- human beings. Okay. And so you want you sure you want to share it? They don't have to get the book, or no, this I, is going to leave. I want to share this because okay. this will let them know that they need the book. Okay. Come once on, I tell you these four things, break it down, right? babe. I want to hear because you know I know I'm a little damaged. Come on. <laughs> so the number one thing that bothers most young people, which also bothers older people, is. You don't have the relationship with a biological parent that you desire to have. Number one. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, I heard that. Okay. Especially all this divorce. Exactly. So when you have an eight-year-old and his parents divorce, 
he's going to have some emotional setbacks from that, but we don't talk deal about with. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't deal with it. We it just think, oh, okay, so yeah, it is what it is. He's over there. I'm over here. Let's keep it It'll moving. be fine. Let's mm-hmm. keep it moving. And it's not fine for that child. Because I notice it, and I can tell, I've always been able to tell the difference between a child that has both parents and a divorce. Absolutely. That other child has a tendency to be a little bit more meaner or bitter. And I'll say, oh, okay, dad or mom must have left. They must not be together. It does something to them. It does something yeah. to you. Come even on. when daddy is, mommy and daddy is home, mm-hmm. but daddy don't communicate. He don't come to the games. He only works and he comes home. He doesn't communicate well with his children. Mm-hmm. And so they find other people to love them when they don't feel the love from dad. Oh. So the, the streets. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I was going to say, sweetie, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, you're fine. But sometimes it's that false sense of love. Oh, and that I, will cause us to make all kind of reckless decisions, mm. wrong relationships, wrong peers, you know, just, all of those things, because you're looking for that love and acceptance. So the first, the number one was you don't have the relationship with a biological parent that you desire to have. OK, number two. Number two is loss. Someone mm. passed away who mm. you truly love. Mm hmm. You truly love them. It could be a parent. It can be a spouse. It could be, be a, a child. Friend. It can be mm-hmm. a best friend. It can be a favorite uncle. It could be your babysitter if that's where you went to every day and now mm-hmm. she's gone. Okay. And you love that person. So, again, I'm naming things that we don't get through on our own. Mm-hmm. We need those five steps to get through these things. Okay. We got the relationship with your biological parents. Mm-hmm. The loss is number two. What's number three? Trauma. Mm. What we also don't realize, there's a lot of inappropriate touching going on in our society. That's mm-hmm. in every culture, black, white, green, blue. Mm-hmm. Every culture has is dealing with the inappropriate touching. And they touching. always, shh, yeah. instead of hollering it out and let it happen. Right. right. Don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, I know your uncle touched you, but he's the only one working in that house. And if you tell on him, your cousins can't eat. Mm. Mm. I'm going to beat him. He can eat. He's going to eat this fish. That's what he's going to eat. But anyway, come on. And so also with trauma, having your dad pull out a gun to get the, everybody in the household in line. <laughs> I told y'all to get in line, didn't I? Ugh. That's trauma. Or seeing, again, seeing your father strike your mother. Okay. Or someone's cheating in the household. That's also trauma. Y'all heard that cheating is trauma for children. Okay. Because yes. sometimes they see things they don't let you know they saw. Right. Or they right. hear things they don't let you know they hear. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Come on. And then number four is rejection. Okay. Mm. So rejection could be um, the social media bullying. Mm. It could be you're 14. You got a little girlfriend that's 14 and she says she gonna, y'all going to be together forever. Then they break, y'all break up and now she's going out with your boy. Well, you know, I don't miss a whole lot of little boys. Because <laughs> I used to keep a boyfriend for two weeks, three weeks. And, you know, all that encompass was, can I have a chance and talking on the phone? And the minute I found out you dumb, I didn't want you anymore. Uh, you, you, you didn't know how to act in school. You didn't dress. Or your nose was dirty. Or you made a mistake and peed on yourself. <laughs> We have to let you go. I apologize to all of y'all. Two week boys. <laughs> they want to kill me. Tell Tammy, Tammy, they said Tammy Payne rejected me. I am so sorry. Didn't mean any harm. Just had to get what was mine. You know, y'all need to apologize too. But don't apologize, Rod and Who you need? Yes, sorry. Um, yes. I apologize. We, to yeah. Everybody in Duval that I ever dated. I'm sorry. <laughs> and ran off to the military with your little chick. And never came back. He never came back, did he, girl? <laughs> he tapped at it. Never came back. You know it be like that. Come on, quit playing. Dale Johnson, you need a mic because you need to apologize. <laughs> You know what? I've seen it too. I remember when we had our first child. Dale looked at that baby and cried. And he said... I he thought about all the girls he had hurt. He ain't want nobody to hurt his daughter. I said, oh, Lord, oh, wow. they going to have to get it back for all, you, all that hitting it and quitting it. Y'all been talking to these boys, all these damaged girls out here. And girls, keep your panties on. They don't want nothing but a little attention. Keep your panties on. No, okay, that's how that rejection come. Yeah. You so that was just too one, much too fast. That was just one form of rejection. <laughs> <laughs> That's a major one. Major. Though. Major, major. Okay. But but going through your own divorce. Mm. That's right. As you get older, 
you're with someone who, again, you, you got married. It. You know, y'all going to have, you know, y'all going to raise kids and grandkids oh together. Till and, death then, is and then that person leaves you and then tries to take your kids from you. Mm, that's trauma. That's trauma. That's rejection. Right? That's all of it. That's right, loss. Right, right. That's fight. Oh, yeah, my right. God. And so okay. we try to get over that by what? Talking to mama who may still be dealing with her own stuff. Mm -hmm. Talking right. with our friends who still have their own stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're not going through these five strategies for emotional wellness. We're going to so, go with the five strategies after the break. But we're going to run back through these four things that, yes. that, you, that helps you understand that you need help. And it was relationship with your biological, loss. Mm-hmm. Trauma, Trauma and rejection. And rejection. We'll be right back. Call a friend and tell them to listen in. I have Rod Cunningham, author of the book, Climb One and Climb Two. Hey. My lips, I dig, I love Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some and get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The Rib Man, Mama, the Rib Man. Hello, this is Angie Fox, founder of the Ash Wednesday Cigar Club. We meet every first Wednesday of the month at a Tampa Bay Area Cigar Lounge. $20 per person includes a featured cigar, libation, appetizers, and a door prize ticket. Check out our list of upcoming events at ashwednesdaycigarclub.com. Tampa Bay. Want to cruise to Cuba? Tampa to Havana. We've got the best prices. Call Kinty Travel, 863-274-3715. That's Kinty Travel, 863-274-3715. Baby, let's cruise. <sighs> I am Tampa Bay Tam. You're tuned in to In Touch Radio, Reality Radio. The sad thing is we got a camera, so you're catching everything off air. I'm getting rid of this camera. <laughs> uh, but all you know is that people glad we got this camera, right? You want to know what's going on behind the scenes. You are listening to my theme song by C. Renee. C. Renee, a bad chick. Go ahead. I did. Now download the song, y'all. Download the song and jam to it every day. Look in the mirror and just love yourself. Hey, it might be cool to make love to, too, because you'll be like, I love myself. <laughs> yeah, child. Especially if you love yourself by yourself. It's a sad situation for some folks. But I ain't mad at you because I'm, uh, I'm a strong believer that orgasms heal. Everyone need a regular orgasm. And some of y'all got to do it for yourself. So put on that song, I love myself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be acting like y'all shy. Y'all know it's the truth. Okay. Just said Tampa Bay Tammy told me. I told you now. Everybody ain't gonna tell you the truth, but uh that's one of them things where you talk to mama about that you should have talked to the counselor. Well, I'm the counselor <laughs> right now. Anyway, climb uh and climb two. Climb is what? What's the name of it? Climb, face your past, own your future. And climb two? Time to soar. And which one is a workbook? Both of them are workbooks. So the Face your past, own your future. Um, I like to talk about it as in as things happen to you, you find yourself going deeper and deeper and deeper into what I call an emotional hole. An emotional hole. I can dig it. So okay. when you go through, let's say your, your parents divorce when you're eight, you go down. Your mm -hmm. father strikes you because you were lying and you really didn't lie. You go deeper. Well, Grandma, I don't miss those children up because I don't whip my children. <laughs> but... But I got some good ones. I worked on mine. Come on. So grandma passes, you go deeper, and then yeah. you get your own divorce, and you go deeper. Mm -hmm. So then they, they, the doctors may give, you know, a diagnosis <laughs> for those things, you know, ah, at the first okay. level, the second level, anxiety, depression. You know, you start getting those names that we don't get because we don't go. Mm -hmm. So nobody mm -hmm. knows what we have, right? So we mm -hmm. self-medicate. We self-medicate. So boo got some weed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I remember them nickel bags. <laughs> okay, everybody say no. I don't remember. Go ahead and lie. <laughs> oh, it ain't no nickel anymore. A nickel meant $5. I don't think you can do no nickel anymore, can you? Yeah. Oh, you can't. <laughs> I was going to say inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> but see, like somebody knows very well. But it's funny you mentioned that the marijuana thing because we do self-medicate with marijuana. 
when we go through the things that we go through, we're going to choose something mm -hmm. to comfort us. Mm -hmm. And I think the big domino is called stress. Mm -hmm. So as long as we're stressed, we will then reach for something to comfort us. And a lot of us do comfort food. If you're looking at a girl that was once really thin and now she's all huge and big, she is self-medicating too. She's comforting herself with food. So we got to find another way to comfort us. In. And think about that with chips and chocolate. That's a billion dollar industry Ooh. that pays billions in taxes. <laughs> I got some chip and dip at home now. <laughs> Let Daryl not be home. It'd be me and the chocolate baby in the bed. Come on. So some people may choose um, a drinking which uh -huh. is also a billion dollar industry that pays billions in taxes. Mm -hmm. Some people may choose to cheat on their spouse. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that media gratification. Looking for comfort, right? Mm -hmm. So if you de-stress No comfort them, in that because if I run you down with my shotgun, you're going to be stressed. <laughs> Come on, keep going. I'm going to be good. <laughs> uh, some people choose to smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, some people choose to fight. Mm -hmm. uh, some people choose to play video games for five hours a night. And look, and remove themselves from their real life. Yes. Exactly. Which is also a billion dollar. All these are billion dollar industries mm -hmm. that pay billions in taxes. And some people take the cold, calm way out and throw themselves in a book mm -hmm. and just live vicariously through others. Which that's a pretty smooth way to do it, really. Well, when you do it that way, you, you educate yourself and you are able to escape Okay. And within that book. Mm -hmm. But some take pills. Oh, yeah. Some buy pets. Some go shopping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> retail, retail therapy. <laughs> so that's why you buy some what you decide to buy for others. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't want to tell you stress out so she can buy for me. But <laughs> I'm tempted to be selfish like that. <laughs> don't stress my girl out. Come on. Some people buy a pet. Mm -hmm. You know, some people work out, you mm -hmm. know, to get rid of that stress. So there are positive ways to do it um but it doesn't get rid of the emotional uh, isolation that you experience so these are just you know things that make you feel better at the time i play so much sometimes i knock you off so i know it was the four things and then it was the five the four were identifying what was it so the four things are um you don't have the relationship with the biological parent that mm -hmm. you desire mm -hmm. that's number one mm -hmm. number two is Loss. Mm -hmm. Number three is trauma. trauma. And number four, number four is? is rejection. And then there's five to what? So the five is are the ways, the five strategies are the ways to come out. Okay, y'all. Get ready. The five yes. ways to come out. Yes. Give I, it haven't, to me, I haven't given you those. Now, right, you don't have to get right. the book for that. Oh, okay. we got land in there. <laughs> can, Suck it in. Look, look, yeah. look. Okay, but can we'll we just look. give them a little tease about okay. the acronym of CLIMB? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, 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 he's going to okay. let you do it, wifey. Poo. You're going to let me do that? Yeah. Okay. So, um, the by acronym. nature, okay. I'm a scholar. Okay. I love to read. I love to study. Okay. So, acronyms make things easier for me I to love retain. love acronyms. Mm -hmm. So, CLIMB. C for? Courage. Courage. Because it takes courage to confront the thing that you know needs to be conquered in your courage life. Courage to confront. Okay, go ahead. L, love. Love. Because absent of love, all of this means nothing. And the Bible says the greatest of these things is love. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. integrity. Integrity. You just mentioned the Bible. The Bible says it's the truth that sets you free. The truth will so set you free. So if you're not willing to tell the truth mm -hmm. about the trauma, mm -hmm. about the rejection, about the loss, about the absence uh, of your parent, Mm. You know, that real healing mm -hmm. that we all desire to experience so that we can live our best life. Mm -hmm. We continue to deny that. Now, you know what? I don't know. what It's I, the board. It's the board. You're just going to have to stay into it. Because I was thinking this when she turned her head, the mic goes oh, okay. off. And maybe this mic doesn't have the range that the other. I don't know. Okay. So you're going to get closer to this light, okay. like, like you're making love to oh, the girl. Oh, okay. The, you know, like, <laughs> man, we now, now. Hey, hey, don't play goody two-shoes now. You got this fine man over here. You ain't keeping him just being goody two-shoes. Okay. Okay, now. Yes. Yeah, me, I love you. I know okay, you do. So <laughs> so the M is for mindfulness. Mindfulness. And we've got to be mindful, mindful. Mm -hmm. you know, of the things that we are allowing in our lives and mm -hmm. the things that are exiting our lives. 
Okay. 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 And then B. B. Belief. Belief. What Do are you believe beliefs? that healing is available for you? I Do you believe it. that these strategies are Word. really going to be the thing that help you get turned around? So the acronym CLIMB again is courage and love. Love. Integrity. Integrity. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. And belief. Belief. Okay, okay, okay. Did you all come up with that together or you came up with that and she shared it with you? Or that's how, what she added to the... Wait. She shared it with me. Hey, that's what's, when you say soul mates and better half. She, yeah. came, she came up with the whole... Climb. Yeah, the whole climb. Iron shopping. Like iron. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And in all fairness to Rod... You know, be, because, you know, what I just shared about the way that I learn and, and retain information, mm-hmm. it was my husband creating that safe space. Safe space for, for you. For me to be able to talk and share mm-hmm. is where really mine, you know, was birth. You know, when you have close friends and family, you see damage and things, and sometimes they're not often willing to share, but you'll throw your hands up in there and say, where that come from? Mm-hmm. Because something has happened that That's you may right. not have known anything about, and you know they weren't willing to share with you. It wasn't a safe place for them to share with you. And I'm gonna tell you something else. I've noticed, um, and I could be wrong. Most of the motor mouth girls, the ones that talk a lot, they didn't go through as much because people don't. Uh, when usually when people are doing things to you, they know they can't. You'll tell everything so they don't bother you. They get that little quiet one. So the one that's holding things in or whatever. So talk to your children. Allow them yes. to talk. Don't always just say shut up. Let them be free and free right. spirited. And a lot of times people are less likely to even bother those kids because mm-hmm. they think, oh, she has a she has confidence. Yes. She has a good relationship with someone because confidence, because and my pastor told me this, confidence starts at home. Mm-hmm. Amen. Shyness starts at home. Right. So I don't like people to say, oh, she's shy. No, she's not. Uh, don't make her shy. She can, don't even speak that on her. Let her speak out and be confident. That comes from someone stopping you, beating mm-hmm. you down and uh, regulating you. So, and I know people saying, that's not true. Believe me. Keep living. You'll see. Mm. Let your child speak out, be themselves, be free. And you can handle a little noise. Children are children. That's Let right. Let them be free. That's right. Mm-hmm. I never forget we were laying in the, one of my children laying in the floor, legs all up in the air, and Mama said, "Leave her alone. Let her be free while she can. Mm. She can't sit like that always, you know." So I was like, "Oh, okay." Made a lot of sense, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. But if some another man in the house, put your legs down. <laughs> Because some of these men are sick. That's right. Okay, okay. Right. We're going to be right back and we're going to talk more about Climb and how to get the book. I, I, I and if you need it. Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check The Way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based project-based and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your student a more excellent way at the way. Hey, this is Miss K with K's Kitchen. Cooking Chicago-style fried chicken and fish with the authentic Chicago-style mouth sauce. Come check us out at 5508 North 50th Street in Tampa. We're open Wednesday through Saturday from 12 to 6. Or you can call us at 813 813- Three six eight five one nine six. Again, that number is eight one three three six eight five one nine six. See you soon. Keeping you informed, in tuned, and in touch. Your worldwide radio connection. In touch radio. 
Been in a car crash? Call Ricky. Don't know what to do? Ask Ricky. We will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain. So call Ricky. Ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. Call Ricky. Ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. Mm. Hey, I'm glad you stayed. Did you call a friend and tell them to listen in? Please do. And you can also call in. I am Tampa Bay Tammy. You're tuned in to In Touch Radio. And the call in number today is 813 444 9588. Again, it's 813 444 9588. Write it down because you may want to use it another day and not today. I'm here in the studio today with a very beautiful couple, a very beautiful power couple that have been married for. 23 years. Hey, you see, they work <laughs> together like that. And he has written a book, and she has co-signed on it. You know, she has supported her man every step of the way. And the name of the book is Climb, and this is Climb 2. So, hey, tell us. And it's a workbook, too. And you wrote this book. Uh, it came out six months ago? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we have covered the fact that he has four reasons why people are usually damaged. And they were? They, they were. Um, number one, you don't have the relationship with the biological parent that you desire number two is loss you lost somebody who you truly love okay number three is trauma trauma all that touching and sneaking that's what we talking about right and, and number, beating and fighting come on right and number four is rejection rejection and a lot of y'all are <laughs> guilty and so, and so those are the things that we can't get over on our own Mm -hmm. We have to have help to do that. And the five strategies that I talk about in the book covers that. And I will. My wife wanted me to give one. Okay. The five strategies. I'm going to give you you two. Get over those four trauma. I'm going to give you two of them. Number one is counseling. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because what do we say? Oh, I'm good. I'm having a good good. day today. So I don't need to go to counseling. Right. But we have to to go because we have that stuff that's stuck down in our gut Mm -hmm. and we have to get it out. And you know what? A lot of times you can talk about it and get it out, but everybody doesn't want to talk about it with you. Right. They see you coming, they run from it or they dodge it. Okay, somebody's come calling in. Let's see what's up. Hey, this is Tampa Bay Tammy. Who are we speaking with? Hey, this is Cassidy Johnson, your favorite number one daughter. <laughs> hey, Hello. Cassidy. Hey. Yeah, that's my Hi. oldest daughter. Just got in from South Africa. She didn't even come home. Wow. This year. <laughs> she ran off and saw the world, and I'm so proud of it. Wish I could have awesome. done it. Do it, girl. What's going on, Cassidy? Yeah. I was just calling to say hello and that I love you. I'm so proud of the work that you're doing on air, and I'm happy to see what you guys are going to do for 2019. Hey, you got optimistic expectations, huh, baby? That's right, Mama. And forgive me for all the times I whooped your tail. Because they said sometimes that could be that could be trauma. That could be trauma. But wait a minute, I'm just like Joe Jackson, baby. I breathe success. Okay. I love you, baby. This is my firstborn. Okay. Nothing like that. Oh, which oh, she knows she's watching the show. Climb. The book is climb. And if you know, if one too many whoopings damage you, get the book climb. <laughs> and work it out in the workbook. Okay. And if anything happened to you that you didn't share with me, get the book climb. And let's work it out in the workbook. Okay. So this is what I challenge all, all right, this is what I that. challenge all parents to say to their children. Mm, this is that? because a lot of times we're holding on uh, children are holding on to something that the parent did to them when they were teenagers. Now they're in their thirties and they're still holding on mm-hmm. to it. And so the, the question that the parent should ask the child is, have I ever said or done anything to you that you have not been able to get over? Huh, now I've done so much of that. My children have told me, mama, you said, it's okay. Have I ever done? Don't wow, you tell them. Wow, this seems like a or setup. <laughs> no, a that's setup. right, baby. Get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you get I, the book uh, climb and you work it out. <laughs> uh, I am going to um, hop off now. And, uh, <laughs> uh, this is a patio uh, conversation. <laughs> but uh, this was uh, what an amazing topic to have. This is something that I actually spoke to friends um while i was on the trip to south africa okay uh, because we were looking at how family how the family dynamic works and how 
um, white families and black families are different when it does come to uh, spanking and uh, spanking their children. Mm -hmm. And how a lot of times black parents are, you know, overly stressed, thinking Mm -hmm. of a lot of other things that they have to do. And so instead of resorting to words, they resort to um, punishment instead of talking some things out. So they're quicker to, to clap. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than kind of talking through some things, and so yeah, I believe that uh, I, I'm not. I believe that there there could be growth in that type of dy- family dynamic, mm-hmm. and yeah, there are definitely things that I think adult um, children hold on to with their parents if they aren't open to discussing, or if either party aren't open to listening and being heard. So, mm-hmm. what a great topic today. I definitely do have to hop off because I have a facial appointment, but I can't wait to hear the playback on this. Okay. And uh, I love you guys. Well done. Yeah. Such a great work. Oh, and I think you Talk got that jumpsuit. Too. Wait a minute. I think you got that lavender pants that we were talking about. Lavender, green, and light blue with the sequins all over. And when you go out at night, it just sparkles. If you got that, yeah, baby. Yeah, it's a G, it's G oh. jacket and uh, it's pants and a jacket. Yeah, <laughs> baby, that thing was about four hundred dollars. Okay, so you keep it back then. All that, right, that, okay. That's <laughs> You rocked I again. I just wore that jacket in Atlanta. Wow. <laughs> wow. Ago. Baby, when you buy quality, you can keep it. That's right. I did. Sure good, did. But good. I will be happy to send it back to you. If you <laughs> with like. the pants, so, you too. Know what? I don't know if I can get them. With up. the pants, too. I got a seamstress yeah, that can add me I some fabric. I got a great time out of it. I definitely got my wear. Hey. And it still looks great. I, I took know. very good care of it. And that came from N- Valerie Nicole's <laughs> boutique. She dressed Ooh. me. Mm, the beautiful <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all be great. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you for calling in, Cassidy. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> now, climb. You see, even the best families need help, okay? Right. Don't think, you know, it's not a... Uh, I hear people tell me, oh, your children did so well. Well, they got their problems, too. Problems with me and the way I responded to things as well. So it's not just you or whatever, but the sooner you get to the bottom of things, mm-hmm. the better outcomes we can get. But the thing is with that question is, when you ask the question as a parent, have I ever said or done anything to you that you have not been able to get over, you then have to be quiet and listen. And that's my problem. Right, it's just kind of not in my character. <laughs> well, see, because the kids then will feel like, here's my time. This right. is my That's time right. to say. Mm-hmm. It's different from saying, if I ever did something to you, I'm sorry. Yeah, that is right. right. right? I'm right. sorry, God dang it. You came out fine, right? No, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's working with me today, y'all. So <laughs> then when the, when the child says, well, yes, Mom, when I was 14, you did this or you punished me and I didn't do it, Right. The first thing we want to say is, well, you need to get over that. Mm -hmm. Or, you still talking about that? Mm -hmm. I wasn't perfect, and I'll never be perfect. And when Mm -hmm. you become a parent, you're going to make some decisions, yeah, Mm -hmm. that you, you, you know, you won't understand until you become a parent. But the actual response should be, from the parents, three responses. Okay. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I love you unconditionally. I love you unconditionally. And that will change the entire relationship in a second. Hey, you heard that, Cassidy? You heard that to me? That's a book, too. You heard that, Kendall? (laughs) Hey. Okay. Y'all, forgive me. But you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle your grandbabies, right? <laughs> when you handle little bad buzzers running around here embarrassing the family, they will all be smart, well-weared, well-dressed, and well-behaved. But okay, I'm going to try to curve some of that. But sometimes they may even get jealous over how you treat the grandchildren because you didn't treat them that way. Oh, I hear that, too. Mm-hmm. I hear that. I hear that. And why, hear and why that. does that happen, honey? Well, well, not because they're still holding on yeah. to the, the things that happen. And I so now you're treating sisters. the grand, and they're going, well, you let my son do da 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 You, you didn't do that yeah, for me. You ain't do that for me. Mm-hmm. Well, oftentimes, the don't parent call me, Nisa, don't call has me. evolved. <laughs> yes. Right? The so parent. the parent, we as parents oh, have evolved. Oh, yes. So our outlook on life has changed. Our perspective on stuff that we used to be so uptight about. Has you know, changed. Mama used to tell me, honey, just keep living. Calm down. Just keep, keep living. living. Yeah, yeah. And and when you do, you realize that some of the stuff that you thought was so important wasn't very important, wasn't very at, important all. at all. And I like to say all the time, I am not who I was last week. 
Man. So you know I'm That's not who I was five years That's ago because experiences change you. Right. All the limitations and the way I thought about life and the world has changed. Right. I am not who I was 20 years ago. If you knew me 20 years ago, you just saw me doing my development and my growth. And I thank God for everything that happened. I like my past and my memories, and you know, because it made me who I am today, okay? And able to accept the things that have changed in my life. Now, the biggest, everybody has major things that happen in their life that pivot them to somewhere else. And I think the biggest thing that happened to me was the loss of my son. So yes. that sent me in a different relationship with God and with people and death and how I deal with everything. And there are some major things. Some people's major things are divorce. Like you said, you know, that's that trauma thing mm-hmm. and that lost thing. So we all dealing with it. I dealt with it one way. Daryl dealt with it another way. And the children dealt with it. Some of them never talked about it. I had friends come to my house. If I opened my mouth, they did not want to hear about Brad. Or they did not want to see any tears. It was too much for them. Mm-hmm. But I had to deal with it because I had to, I knew I had to go on and I had to be well because I had too many people out there that needed me to be well. So climb, climb is a way to get well. And so that counseling, if you had been going to a counselor instead of your friends, the counselor would have heard everything you had to say. And I wouldn't go to a counselor and I'm still not going. <laughs> Let me tell you, now look, now you got to choose okay. your counselor as well, because okay. I think some of them don't have the same relationship with God that you have, so mm-hmm. they can't tell you. I was like, she can't tell me anything. She's not this or that, and you can't tell me anything about a marriage if you've never been married. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me about children if you never had children. You're going to have to have some of the, my same experiences and come through with it for me to listen to you. Well, the counselor is not there to share your experience. They're there just to listen, listen. Okay. to let you get it all out so you're not holding it. In, and, it, and your heart is hurting and it's mm-hmm. tight and it's mm-hmm. you know and they're letting you just air it out because child i was airing mine out at walmart <laughs> at church yeah. you don't have Next a gun, up, do you? no okay, in, the, in the driveway raking the leaves <laughs> right. so yeah it's going to come out right mm-hmm. it's going to come out so and let it come out mm-hmm. to the to that person, right? Mm-hmm. To that counselor. That and we don't do that enough, especially in the brown community. In the brown community. African Americans and Hispanics. But you know they have a tendency to say, it's not gonna hurt you, but let me tell you, when I went to get my license for my to carry my gun, because I got me a concealed weapons license, that question is on the mm-hmm. application. Have you been to therapy or have you seen someone about something? So if you do, keep it to yourself. <laughs> It'll stop you from getting things. Climb. Rod Cunningham. Where can they get the book again? Hold it up. www.chooseclimb. C-L-I-M-B dot com. A workbook for $30 and it can change your world. Climb your way to success. But it says, face your past on your future. Holla back, y'all. I'm gone. Thank you, Tammy. Girl, I'm cutting the sister off. <laughs> Radio, everyone is a star. Shining star for you to see what your life can truly be. On your smooth soul and R&B station. On the World Wide Web. In Touch Radio.